Good afternoon. My name is Vivi Kunduri. I'm a professor at the Athens University of Economics and Business, and I'm going to be talking about sustainable recovery from COVID-19 pandemic. At the moment, we are facing three big crises. The COVID pandemic, which of course we try to control with uh, social distancing measures and biomedical research for identifying the vaccine. The huge recession that the pandemic is causing, and this is a very challenging situation because we need to take measures in order to avoid the pandemic turning into a major economic and financial crisis that will long outlast the health crisis. We need to work the workforce to remain employed, even if guaranteeing. We need governments to channel financial support to public and private institutions to support vulnerable citizen groups. We need SMEs to be safeguarded against bankruptcy. We need policies to support the financial system and non-performing loans will mount. And we need fiscal packages comparable to the crisis-related loss of GDP to be financed by national debt. The third crisis that we are simultaneously facing is, of course, the uh, mother of all crises, the climate crisis. The climate crisis refers to the urgency of limiting global warming to plus 1.5 degrees Celsius, beyond which the risk of extreme weather events and poverty for hundreds of millions of people will significantly increase. There is no country on Earth at this point that is not experiencing the drastic effects of climate change. The annual average economic losses from climate-related disasters are in the hundreds of billions of dollars. The human Human impact of geophysical disasters, which are 90% climate related, is huge. 1.3 million people killed between 1998 and 2017, and 4.4 billion injured. The carbon neutrality of 2050 announced within the European Green Deal is a crucial target. The UNEP emissions gap record. A report of 2019 indicates that global emissions need to be cut by 7.6% per year. Calculated, this means a global reduction target of at least 68% by 2030. Luckily, on the 17th of September, the European Commission President proposed to increase the 2030 goal for emissions reduction from 40% of 1990 levels to at least 55%. And we have a sustainability policy framework. We have a blueprint for guiding the recovery, the sustainable recovery from the pandemic. And let me refer to it very briefly. 2019, uh, New York, 193 countries signed Agenda 2030 of the United Nations with the 17 Sustainable Development Goals that refer to people, their prosperity, and their interaction with nature, with the planet. A few months later, 197 countries signed the Paris Climate Agreement, agreeing to limit global temperature to well below 2 degrees Celsius. In 2018, the Intergovernmental Panel for Climate Change uh, announced that we need to limit global temperature to 1.5%. 2% is not enough. We cannot handle the 2%. This implies zero net emissions globally by 2050. In 2019, the Sustainable Development Solutions Network of the United Nations, and I'm honored to chair the uh, country hub of this global network, announced during the Climate Week in New York the six major transformations to achieve the SDGs. This is a way to oper operationalize the SDGs into six transformations uh, consistent with the way governments are structured. These transformations are education, gender and inequality, health, well-being and democracy, energy decarbonization and sustainable industry, 
sustainable food, land, water, and oceans, sustainable cities and communities, and the digital revolution for sustainable development. In December 2019, we have the announcement of the European Green Deal. This is the new growth strategy of Europe, and it has four axes climate neutrality by 2050, cancelling out pollution, protected biodiversity and human health, climate tech leadership for European companies and the just transition, leaving no one behind. The European Green Deal comes with a budget of one trillion, half of it to come from EU budget and the other half to be mobilized by public-private partnership. Unfortunately, 2020, we have the uh, coronavirus pandemic, flattening the infection curve, deepens the microeconomic recession curve, and among many countries, the NMRD national uh, institutions, the European Commission came um, with its own resilience recovery plan, the EU generation, uh, next generation, uh, recovery and resilience, uh, instrument which amounts to 750 billion for investments that are climate and digital mainstream. And the European Green Deal is not the only top-down mobilization around the world. Uh, we have Canada, uh, PAC for Green New Deal, the South Korean Green New Deal, the Israeli Green Recovery Plan, the US Green New Deal that is going to implement it now with the new president and the wonderful announcement of China's carbon neutrality commitment before 2060. And in addition to top-down mobilization, we have bottom-up mobilization. Within the European Green Deal, we have a climate pact, a pact between politicians, policy makers, the civil society, businesses, NGO, technology developers, research and education. A pack to uh, commit and engage if in a fundamental transformation of our economic, social and financial systems that will trigger exponential change in decarbonization rates and strengthen climate resilience. As indicated explicitly in the Intergovernmental Panel for Climate Change report, we need rapid, far-reaching and unprecedented changes in all aspects of the society. And this cannot be achieved working through gradual incremental changes. We need major transformations that will trigger exponential change. And that is why we work in with a systems innovation approach. At the moment, I'm very um, honored uh, to lead the European Green Deal report of the United Nations Sustainable Development Solutions Network. I lead this report with Professor Jeffrey Sachs of Columbia University and president of the United Nations Sustainable Development Solutions Network. This report identifies how the 90 foreign policies of the European Green Deal biodiversity from farm to fork, sustainable agriculture, clean energy, sustainable industry, building and renovating, sustainable mobility, eliminating pollution, and climate action can be jointly implemented with the Sustainable Development Goals, the Next Generation EU Recovery Fund, the Enhanced MFF, the European Semester Process Recommendation, and we develop investment pathways supported by technological pathways that will allow the joint in the implementation of the policies I mentioned just now. And in doing so, we also investigate the implications for job creation and inclusive job transition for each and every one of the 27 member states. And then we upscale our investment recommendation at the European level. Obviously, there are, exist three major drivers. The first is decarbonization, and we need to revise our national energy and climate plans towards endorsing the 55 
target uh, of increased ambition with regards to, uh, to reduction of greenhouse gas emissions. For achieving a 55% reduction, we need to increase investment by 350 billion per year, investment in decarbonization. The technological pathways are gonna help enable this decarbonization and they've been identified explicitly in the European Commission Annual Sustainable Growth Strategy, which identifies the reforms and investment to create European flagships. These flagships are power up, which means lay down the foundation for hydrogen lead markets, renovate, recharge and refuel, connect, that is provide universal access to rapid broadband services, modernize EU ID and key digital public services, scale up and reskill and upskill the labor force so that it can keep up to pace with the technological advancements during this era of the fourth industrial revolution. Circular economy is the other major driver, is a win-win situation, it saves um, 600 billion euro for EU businesses, it creates more than half a million jobs, it reduces the environmental footprint of production, and it creates opportunities for public-private partnerships for SMEs, but also large large companies and international companies. The third driver is climate change adaptation infrastructure, which generates a triple dividend. It avoids losses due to climate change, it produces economic benefits from the investment program, and it produces social and environmental benefits. And of course, in with these mobilizers, we also need to try to uh, have equity consideration and introduce measures to counterbalance the regressive effects of decarbonization and at the same time create sustainable finance, finance that is in accordance with the EU taxonomy for sustainable investment and also introduces credibly structured financial instruments like green bonds that, are, that can accelerate the sustainability transition. All this is also referred in the uh, Lancet COVID-19 Commission that is promoting solutions to improving public health and support economic recovery and I'm honored to lead the task force on job space green recovery. Again there we indicated that the recovery should uh, support the transition towards sustainable and inclusive societies based on the SDGs and the Paris Climate Agreement. This uh, is the focus of the work that we do in the Cluster for Sustainability Transition. I lead this um, uh, group of uh, researchers and institutions that work on transforming research and innovation into climate action. And the basic institutions are the Sustainable Development Institute at the Athens University of Economics and Business, the UN a Sustainable Development Solution Network of Greece that includes as member all universities and research institutions of the country, and the EIT Climate Key Hub of Greece, which basically accelerates uh, climate-related innovation in the market. We work across the five continents, mostly in Europe, but also around the world in large interdisciplinary projects with a sustainability focus. We have three axes, research and innovation projects, innovation acceleration and deep demonstration in education and training. Our main thematics are projects on green digital, just recovery, circular economy, climate change mitigation, and adaptation. We also work in uh, blue growth. We have many interdisciplinary research projects and deep demonstration projects, but also global initiatives like the Global Roundtable for Sustainable Shipping and Ports and the Four Seas Initiative that uh, develops pathways for the implementation of blue growth in the black 
uh, Sea, the Mediterranean the Sea, the Caspian Sea, and the Aral Sea. Finally, our third axis of research is Water, Food, Energy, Nexus, Smart Agriculture, and Smart Urban Waters, and we are proud to have won the uh, biggest um, European Research Council um, award on uh, smart water futures, which is now one of the biggest projects on uh, smart water systems around the world. Finally, we accelerate su successful uh, startups in Greece on various aspects of sustainability, uh, renewable energy like hydrogen, waste management, immobility, and um, uh, marine uh, recycling. This is all we do in order to transform research and innovation into climate action. Thank you.